soul evaluates the different life experiences that one could have in this particular experience who you are today and makes a decision that is this the best experience in order for my soul to grow now the soul doesn't see the body as oh everything's gonna be happy go lucky or everything's gonna be traumatic it just simply looks at it from the perspective of if i'm in these circumstances and i find a way to get to the highest vibrational path here will my soul elevate because the soul is not able to elevate outside of this carbon-based experience in such a transformative way because you got to think about it like this when you know all the answers okay are you really learning when you're on an energetic level you see everything from the macro view oh yeah just do this just do that you know all that is out there right like think about it you're watching um someone go through a maze you know and you're like oh just go to the left go to the right because you can see it from the macro view but you're not really learning anything looking at it seeing from the macro view because you can see everything but if you were in the maze learning problem solving learning how to navigate through stress learning how to navigate through uncertainty you get so much more from it so the soul incarnates into the physical body in order to have that experience to get so much more out of it and then the soul has the concept of soul contracts meaning you're going to go through certain things now the soul contract is more of like karmically you may incarnate with different souls different uh, physical energetic experiences and it's just a part of the soul contract now at any moment you can break the contract but these things that are karmic and they can be positive too these things that are karmic that you just feel oh, i can't get away from this type of relationship or i can't get away from this type of scenario or i can't get away from this type of you know like uh, always in this state it is a natural flowing energy that incarnated with you and you have to make the decision if you would like to break it or not a lot of people do not know they just don't know you know you don't have to necessarily go a spiritual path don't get me wrong you can use self-determination and discipline but if you're a part of our community you might be more inclined to the unknown so this is giving you an opportunity to analyze and feel through channel the information of your soul contract that also means you have to let things go that means you're gonna have to let people you love go that are not good for you that are holding on to karmic energy that is just gonna bring you down now you'll be surprised sometimes you'll let these people go and they themselves will elevate because it was a part of their soul contract to be let go by you so that they can elevate but sometimes people want to hold on to people so tight that they're going to be stuck in a lower vibrational energetic flow okay so when it comes to the soul contract it feels uncomfortable it feels uncertain when you break it there's a saying you know the devil you know where it's like a person is too afraid to go to something that is better for them or could be better for them because they're like well what if it's worse at least i know this most of the time most i want to say 100 percent of the time in my lived experience but i'm gonna just say most of the time if you're in a fucked up situation and you are looking for something else but you're too afraid to leave it is the fear that keeps you in karmic situation it is not the fear that is helping you from preventing yourself to go up into a worse situation do you understand that so here with karma i, had to, I felt like i had to you know explain that a little bit before we jumped into all of this you have to be able to let some stuff go let it go and it could be internal too not everything is so external a person situation sometimes it's internal beliefs a sense of not being good enough a sense of being like of self-sabotage a sense of uh not feeling worthy enough whatever that is it can live within you as well so let's go in through here and work at releasing this karmic baggage now you often manifest people in your life that are a reflection of your karmic baggage in order for you to exert boundaries and make better decisions when you are unconscious about this kind of stuff you just let them come into the cycle of what you're living but when you become more conscious you learn how to break away from it i will tell you a very lived experience when i had to let a certain energy go in 
a negative thing. Just think about it in the state of energy. It's just lower vibrational. You're at a higher vibrational frequency and it needs to go on so it can evolve too. Because you never know this energy could be higher vibrationally to someone else. So release it so it can actually do work with someone else because you have outgrown it. And I think sometimes the problem can be that you notice that this energy could actually be positive energy or a higher vibrational experience for someone else and you want to stay there. No, 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 baby. You got to let that energy go so it can grow. It can help others. It can, you know, evolve and you need to be able to receive something bigger because right now you are a big fish in a small pond. It's time to be a small fish in a big pond and grow, grow, grow. So let's take this karmic package and just remove it and let it go, placing no judgment and releasing the fear, releasing all the fear associated with it, you know, it's like you're breaking up with your energy, which can be as difficult as breaking up with a person letting it go, something that has been familiar to something that is unknown. Maybe it hasn't presented itself in your life yet and that can be a little nerve-wracking. But it's more about just familiarity, just wanting something to be consistent. Okay, so let's take this, take this, take this out, take this, take this, take this out, removing. I'm just going to work with this energy here, okay? Just breathing in and out, just letting it go. Like to grow.
ourselves first. And what I mean by that is I don't mean by being selfish because being selfish is more of something that has to do with insecurity. I'm talking about taking full responsibility for their life and co-creating, know that they are co-creating this life and taking ownership of that, that within itself is a lot, lot, lot of power. To know that the power is within you first and outside of you is a reflection of what is in you first. So if you want to change anything that is outside, you start by changing what is inside. The first thing is always gratitude, living in a space of gratitude. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect, doesn't mean you're walking around on cloud nine all the time. Sometimes life happens, shit gets real and shit gets fucked up and you feel different from time to time or people get you out your pocket. That's okay, it happens, it's a life. But at the core of living life, Try your hardest, if you can, to think about something you are grateful for. You know, something that so deeply connects you to your purpose, um, to that positivity. Shameless plug for my podcast, Organize Your Purpose. <laughs> but whatever that is, that is so important. It is so important. something uh, brought you down or something deeply impacted 
You are so deserving of this light, this love. You are so deserving of this strength within you. It's true strength. How kind are you that you allowed yourself to be vulnerable? Vulnerable to maybe experiences that are, you know, things that can make a person be stuck from time to time. But I don't think we should forget how strong many 
just because you're ready for it and you had to have that opportunity to let things go. I talk about it all the time, being an emotional or an energetic hoarder. An energetic hoarder is someone who is not ready to let go of the things they need to let go to allow them to grow, but at the same time wants to manifest and bring things in. You cannot. Letting go sometimes feels uncomfortable. It feels strange. It feels like, uh, 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 but it's a part of the process. So just accept that it is a part of the process. Release it. Allow any, you know, emotions that form to be normal emotions. You know, you don't got to be happy all the time. You don't got to be motivated all the time. You don't have to act like you have it all together. Everybody's going through shit from time to time. So just allow your body to process things. Don't put no judgment on it and move on when you're ready so that you can receive this new life. Okay. So I just want to work with the energy here a bit and I just want to open you up to receive what is for you. Sometimes when you don't know and blessings are coming into your life, it's even better because sometimes we wish for stupid shit. I'm so serious. <laughs> sometimes we wish for things that we think we need, but we really don't. But it's when we release and let the universe just send us something that is beautiful and for us, that it's really for us and we can accept it for what. want to give you this word of advice when it comes to manifesting, manifestation work, spell work, petition work, any of this stuff. You can influence the energy around you to bring to you what you want. You can. But sometimes you got to just let the universe, source, God, or whatever it is you believe in, that's your business, bring what is right for you. Because sometimes you want things, but from an unconscious standpoint, it's from a state of lack. So you end up getting what you want, right? You're like, oh yeah, I've mastered the universe. I can ma manipulate shit. And then you have to go through all of that pain and hurt by forcing things. Just let things unravel. I do collective readings. I do healing sessions. You know, I do all of these things. And when it comes to myself, I pace myself. I'll look at my natal chart, maybe like, you know, maybe once a year, once every couple months, if I'm really pressed, once a month or something like that, just because I'm curious. But I let things happen. When I pull cards for myself, once in a while, sometimes I, I just get like refocused to do it. And it's so funny because refocus is my sister. She, she'll be like, what does this mean to you? I said, girl, that's your job. I, I, I could do this for myself if I needed to. You tell me. But what I try to do is keep it open to the fact that I don't need to know what is going on every moment in the universe on my path. I just let it happen because I think I'm more receptive when I don't know everything. You know, I'm not going to overthink the shit. And so I'm just giving a little bit of advice if I could that just release, let go and go with the flow. So if you're ready for a new life, simply say you're ready for it and work from the highest in a life of peace, a life of calm, a life of happiness, a life of balance. You know, you can get into the details and the specifics, but sometimes I like to keep it open, you know, don't like a little surprise here or there, you know, pop up on me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> So just having that energy and that movement right there. Okay. So let me just work with this energy balancing you. So that you're able to receive this beautiful life that you are so deserving of. That is for your highest vibrational good. That is for your sense of relaxation, comfort, understanding, and patience. All of these things are very much so available to you whenever you need it, okay? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. 
I keep a hobby, I keep that hobby. 
first five, ten years. Feel yourself there. Okay. Okay. Breathing in and out here. Just allowing the energy to move throughout the space. No judgment. Like, 
special kisses and shout outs for everyone who came to the live session yesterday. Had a fantastic time. Okay. So let's just make sure the energy is doing what it needs to do. You know, giving what it needs to give. Uh, you all know I'm paid in smiles. So go ahead and give me some smiles too. Okay. And for those who are interested in becoming Reiki practitioners, Reiki master teachers, ultimately, I do have courses and you can find that information in the description box. Okay. So shifting this energy through and relaxing. Find yourself grounding, grounding down in that. Just going to remove any extra stuff that's taken up too much space, okay? Or clouding your energy. I'm just going to smooth it away, okay? Moving it through, okay? Got it. Shout out to Nancy, my nail tech, because she got the nails looking good today, baby. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> you know me. I just try to have fun with you. That's the only thing that's really important when it comes to life, just having fun. So smoothing this away and moving that from left to right. I'm going to go a little bit slower just to give you an opportunity to just be balanced in that. I'm just going to scan to see if there's any collective messages. Now you all already know that each and every one of us has our own individual story with its own unique path. So the messages that come across for the collective, it's something that we all experience as a collective. So very general, very high view messages, okay? So, what's coming across is information about 2020. Um, and the impact that 2020 made on the collective and a need for collective healing. So as you are going through life in your individual life, you have to heal and the only way to heal is to face the fear. 2020 created an environment of a huge uncertainty. So now the body is used to being uncertain and though it can take an action, it's a little nervous, like a little scared, like, oh my gosh, should I actually do this? Should I actually do Yes, do it the only way that you're going to be able to heal from that impact, that collective impact that we all faced, is to face the fears and to renorm yourself into something new and something different. And that's, you know, baby, that's just what came up, okay? So let me see. So, so I'm going to go in with some cinnamon and just feel that around a little bit. Okay. Got it. So just having that cinnamon all around your energy. And just you can follow that there. You get it let a little bit higher than that. And just breathing in and out through the session. Not requiring more than you need to. Just allowing yourself to build yourself up. Build yourself up into the moment, okay? And surrender to all of this beautiful, beautiful energy that you are surrounded by. Relax into that reality. Relax into that norm. Relax into that certainty. Relax into that consistency. And just be at peace with that. So when you're making progress, okay, and whatever it is you want to do, progress takes time. Progress takes patience. And are you going to be patient enough to get to your end goal on top of progress naturally taking time and taking patience you also have to face anything that you might be facing internally and just showing up head on as well it's more courageous in the big picture to show up when you're afraid and get it accomplished 
accomplish than it is to show up when you're very confident and you have everything figured out. That's really when you build character. Also, it's really when you level yourself up. Because if you're comfortable in what you're doing, you're not really growing or expanding. You're just doing what you already know very well. But when you take yourself to another level and have to learn how to acclimate, that is that energy that surrounds you and gives you an opportunity to grow and expand into bigger spaces. Sometimes you just gotta let it be. So I'm gonna smooth it just to left and right and just work through that energy. And I want you to feel balanced, maybe feel peaceful, okay? Know that you are loved. Know that you have everything that you need. Know that everything is for your highest vibrational good. Know that you are so beautiful, so talented. Okay. And that the path is a path worth going after. If it's in your heart, you should go after it. Okay. If it is in your heart, you should go after it. And as time progresses, um, I don't even know if the answer is work on your confidence and then you'll be able to do it. I think maybe the answer might be just do it anyway. Do it even if you're scared. Do it even if your knees are shaking, you know, just, just do it, you know. Not to sound like an ad, but <laughs> just do it, honestly. And the rest will figure itself out. So just moving through the energy here. And every time you exhale, release and let go. Removing and letting go of anything that's no longer serving you. Remaining balanced in your energy. Surrendering to the reality of your greatness and your purpose and your growth. Growth and expansion, it can be uncomfortable. You know, think about when you are having a growth spurt when you're growing up. What do you do? You're probably tired, moody, you sleep a lot because the body is doing a lot of expansive work. Ultimately, you're going to get to a bigger place, a taller place, a more grown-up place. But when it's happening, it's not like, oh, this feels great. It's like your body is 
section is here for you, so feel free to use it as a diary, a journal, a place to just remember moments that were important for you or for anything comes up, as well as to share your gratitude and encouragement with others. And if you want to kind of go above and beyond, head on over to the gratitude community, which is a running wall of gratitude, and it really will change your vibrational frequency by just reading some of that beautiful stuff there.
seal you with the sign of the infinity and say, well, family, you did a fantastic job. I just want you to know to take your time going for and towards the things that are important to you. Um, never be afraid to outgrow your surroundings. Never be afraid to outgrow your own beliefs uh, about yourself. But also know that progress takes time, it takes patience, you know, true success when it comes to things that you authentically want. It requires a sense of maturity. It may take a while for it to come. And being able to surrender to that fact is one of the most healing things that we all can do on this journey. And because consent matters, do I have your permission to say a prayer? Okay, may I touch you? Okay. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Dear Mother, Father, God, and all for the highest vibrational good only, please connect us to our highest intentions and validate information from our highest self only. Please release what we need to let go and embrace what allows us to grow. Let our journey encompass the lineages, traditions, religions, and spiritual paths that bring light out us to share with others. I say all of this in the name of I am Ashe. 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 Okay. So let's go in with some Reiki symbols just to create the energy and the environment of protection. layer of 
highest vibrational good only. Please connect us to our highest intentions and validate information from our highest self only. Please release what we need to let go and embrace what allows us to grow. Let our journey encompass the lineages, traditions, religions, and spiritual paths that bring light out through us to share with others. I say all of this in the name of I am Ashe. 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 And just moving, shifting, allowing things to just take the space that it needs in your life. So, looking at your current life now, what needs to go? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But what needs to go in order for you to grow? And it's okay to be 100% honest to yourself. Please don't try to create a different narrative because you're trying to make everybody else happy or something like that, or you don't want to see things honest with yourself and whatever you choose to do that's your business but in order for you to get to the next level of whatever it is that you're trying to do you have to be 100% honest and vulnerable with yourself so what needs to change now it can be things that are external or it could be internal patterns too that means oh I need to change the way I think about this or I need to change the way when a new situation comes that I like this, this is my go-to, I want to try this other thing, because at this point in your life, love, you probably know what you need to do, <laughs> and sometimes it can be a little like, uh, you know, just revving up, revving up the motor just to get the engine started, and before we even get there, just getting a clear understanding that it's going to be okay, you know, you're, you're going to be able to make all of this work out, so again, using this space and I have um, just some stones, some stones. I know it's been a while um, for different stones and crystals, um, but I have some emerald and I have some pyrite. And so this emerald is connecting to the heart and the pyrite is going to be um, for those very uh, structural um, resource related things. And I love crystals, but I limit crystals because um, I think it, it's it's twofold for me um, and there's nothing wrong with using crystals I have a, a lot of really great ones but you know there's an entire crystal industry and so it, it makes me you know question the ecological footprint of getting stones from different places and how that impacts you know I'm not saying that you can't do anything you can do whatever the fuck you want to do okay that's just that's just reality um but for me personally i would kind of much prefer to forage i would prefer i would much prefer to forage my area to see what i can get um that's just a personal preference um and that to the side um people want to put the power in something outside of themselves that's why when they think of, you know, God, or they think of something higher, you know, um, some energetic helpers, angels, uh, um, you know, animal symbolism, it is something outside of themselves. When the true power is always within you, you know, um, seeing the God within you, seeing the universe within you, seeing the helper, the angel, the energy within you. Because, you know, when you're always looking outside of you, you'll put more value to in inanimate objects, regardless of if you're infusing it or it has a vibrational property, you'll put more power into it than what it's supposed to do, which is initiate a reaction within the physical body to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. This doesn't matter unless you are receptive. Even when you go in and you start to do things like um, infusing or adding intentions into inanimate objects for the highest vibrational good only, it only takes on its power if you are receptive, if you continue to have that energy going on, that you continue to fill yourself up. So, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, um, but why not? And for those who are curious, yes, I'm getting my nails back on. It's been an arduous month. I didn't know what to do. Being bald-headed on my hands, I just, I didn't know what to do. I just, life has been very different. I don't feel like myself. <laughs> so baby, they coming back. You know, and you can fill in the blank for any kind of um, state of energy that 
in this state of freedom, open-mindedness, balanced? How can you bring that energy in, that intention, into everything that you do? Don't get me wrong. At every moment of the day, you're not going to be like super motivated. That's not realistic. But I'm saying the intention of the things that you start, regardless of you, if you go through, you know, the ups and downs or whatever, that it's ultimately going to bring you freedom. For example, when someone decides to pursue their education for a career that they want, it's hard trying to, you know, if you juggle working and, you know, you have to do all your textbooks and stuff. And then at, there's, even if you're interested in a subject, there's always going to be an area that you just don't care about. You're just like, who cares, you know? But, you know, at the end of the day, that freedom comes from being able to complete this thing to get you to the other side. So I want you to start to think about these goals that you're setting, whether you've already set them or you're thinking about them. One to maybe three. Don't try to do way too much because we really want to take this to the next level and see how it can be infused with that intention of freedom. So now I'm going to pop out with a little bit of the pyrite, which is that talking about resources, talking about, you know, um, money, because baby, if you ain't got no money, how you going to do things? You know, there's a lot of things that you can figure out um, and trade your time and trade your expertise for. At the end of the day, the idea is to monetize whatever, you know, the fruitful gifts that you have that you bring to life that really helps others. Because, you know, if you do not have the ability to have that sense of security, it's going to feel you off balance, not having adequate housing, not having adequate, adequate financial support, not being able to handle your own responsibilities, perhaps you play an important role in someone else's life and it requires money. Um, yes, you know, just yes, that that needs to be added to it. And so, you know, the best thing you can do is be able to live a passion at life, to be able to live a creative life, but also to have that financial stability too that matters, you know, that financial stability will make you more courageous. So that might actually be um, being mindful of your budget because we do have this Uranus and Taurus that's here uh, for a couple of more years. And the last time we had that was during the Great Depression. Um, and what we're seeing now when it comes to that is we're seeing um, cryptocurrencies and uh, the volatility there and how that is um, impacting things. Uh, but it also sends an individual reminder hey, you know, make sure that you pay off your debts. The astrological opposite of Taurus is Scorpio. Scorpio is all about inheritance. It can be debts and things like that. When Uranus, which is the planet of revolution, shock and all, just make it happen. When it is in Taurus, when it is in Taurus, you want to make sure that you do not have debt. You do, you have a sense of security, that things have a strong foundation because as it comes in and shakes things up, the things with the firmest foundations will hold the things with the shaky foundation will not. And so what that means, like when we go and we look back in history, we see that um, uh, prior to the Great Depression, it was like the beginning of people using um, consumer credit. So having credit cards prior to that, it wasn't necessarily like that. You could have a line of credit for certain things, but it wasn't as widespread as directly prior to that. And that's because Uranus was in Aries. And when we had our Uranus in Aries, we saw the rise of Instagram. We saw the rise of social media. We saw the rise of body enhancement, all of these things that are very expensive, you know, to be um, big on Instagram. It has to be aesthetically pleasing. And that typically requires, you know, money to curate whatever it is that you're trying to do. And during that period of Uranus and Aries, that is what worked the period of Uranus and Taurus is different. It's much more earthy. It's much more natural, much more foundation, much more, ca much more caring about, you know, your individual possessions, money as a whole. So people caring much more about being financial, financially stable and budgeting. So I would ask in your everyday life, how is money? You know, how do you work with money? This is not a time period where you just spend, spend, spend. This is actually a time of being strategic and say like, get rid of this. Make sure that you are contributing to your retirement. Make sure you're contributing to your savings, like things like that. That's the energy that is going to bless you, honestly, because it sounds practical. 
circle um, but really what it is is Uranus energy shakes things up it is a snow globe and the more that things are shaken up and the more that you don't have stability by investing in yourself investing in your savings investing in your retirement the more you will feel like you're just you keep on getting uprooted and uprooted and uprooted so in this example you know freedom truly comes from your ability to have that solid foundation that solid sense of security in that kind of way now we're going to talk about this more next time but the type of people because people are energy too you know this is can be very difficult to change the dynamics you have with those around you especially the long ones especially family 
said it up.